Let's handle authentication and authorization in Postman with JSON Web Tokens. I have an example endpoint here where if I look under the authorization tab, you can see I've selected the bearer token authorization helper type. And I have a token that I plan to pass through called JSON Web Token underscore signed. And it's not been resolved yet. Let's look under the pre request script to see how we can generate our JSON Web Token. There's a lot of code here, but there's a couple things I'll scan for. One is going to be the header, which is going to include our hashing algorithm that we'll use to generate our JSON web token. And another is a JSON object. This is going to be the payload that we want to encode in our JSON web token. And some other information here where we generate a signature. The very last two steps of code is one, I'm going to be creating an environment variable called JSON Web Token Signed. Again, we haven't hit send yet, so we haven't initialized this variable that we are going to be referencing under the authorization tab. And then the other thing is we're going to be logging that value to the console just so we can inspect it a little bit more closely. So let's hit send. And when we open up our console, you can see that post call, you can inspect those network details here, but we've already logged this in the pre-request script. This is going to be our JSON Web Token. Let's copy this to our clipboard and then take this over to the JSON Web Token debugger. So when we paste our generated token here, you can see there's three sections separated by a dot that correspond to, once again, this is our hashing algorithm header. Here you have that payload and you have your signature details down below. So when I send through as a client, when I send this JSON web token, the server can then decode it to ensure that it's the proper user with the proper permissions. Let's go back to our example in Postman. So that's how you can generate a web token using code. This is the code if you want to step through that in more detail. Let's see how to do it with a JSON web token helper in Postman. So this example is very similar, but under authorization, instead of selecting the type for bearer token, we'll select JSON web token space bearer. And you can see once again, there's options for configuring our token. Here's our hashing algorithm. We can select from a few different options. We can include a secret. We can decide whether or not we want to encode it. And then here's a different payload that we'll be sending. And we've configured this to add the JSON web token to our request header. And we don't actually even need to send it. Postman has already generated this for us based on our configuration details. Under header, if you scroll to the top, you can see these auto-generated headers here. And there is one header called authorization with bearer space. And then here's our token. And if we copy this token to our clipboard and head back over to our debugger, you can see those three sections with the hashing algorithm, our payload, that we configured under the authorization tab and signature details. So there's a couple more options here. Let's go back under the authorization tab. Remember, we added the JSON web token to the request header, but we can also add it to query params if we wanted to. And all these other options here, this is that payload that was decoded in the debugger. A couple more advanced configuration options. Um, some, some APIs will have a specific configuration. So if it's not bearer, right now we have bearer space this token, but what if it was you know, something creative like token? You can configure those options here, and when you go back over to header, you can see that Postman is just following your configuration details. And that's how you can either manually generate JSON web tokens in Postman. You can follow that at first example here, or you can use the JSON Web Token Helper.